Welcome to SDH's coverage of everything going on in USL League One. We'll work our way backward before we work our way forward and let you know what's going on in Match Week 23 in one of the crowdest tables that is around all over the place, regardless of country, regardless of competition. It's always fun to track down what's going on in USL League One. It's one and two, it's three, and everybody else. And we'll just run through it all and let you know what's going on in the USL League One. So let's go back over the last seven days, six matches to take a peek at. We'll start with uh, action on the 24th, back on last Wednesday in the midweek, forward Madison, North Carolina FC, a goalless draw at Breeze Stevens. Then you had the five matches on your Saturday. Very, very busy time. 6.30 kick at City Stadium, no surprise there. But the surprise, Richmond 3-0 over Union Omaha. Big win for the Richmond kickers at home. North Carolina and FC Tucson, a 1-1 draw at, at Cary at 7 o'clock. Greenville and Northern Colorado, the shock of the weekend and this will be the match of the week. Northern Colorado goes into Legacy early and gets full points. Here's your highlights, courtesy of our friends at USL League One, ESPN Plus, and YouTube. We are underway. Greenville in their greens from left to right to start this half. Northern Colorado from right to left in their whites. Schultz came in the district. Great job while Frankie was out. But now he's out with a back injury. They just keep racking up. And, of course, no Benton Evans tonight for John Harksey. He's away with Jamaica on the national duty. Lukic, a great run and a strike in the first save for Christensen. What a run. That was Wolfgang Prentice coming forward, forcing an early save. Good step up by Breck Evans to clear, and he shouts at his team to get the line moving. Maybe here's a chance. Headed back for Para, gets a shot away, saved by Christensen. That was quick thinking by Stevan Lukic. They've run into trouble, and Deju has it. He'll make a cut. Spread it long for Prentice. Prentice gets to it, and a save by Christensen. It's still alive. Norti, that shot is blocked. That's why you can't go for the easy metaphor, because sometimes you say something you don't mean. <laughs> Coutinho. So it looked like Norti a little bit hobbled after a, a tackle. Come back to that. Ibarra, nice ball in, and a flick header all. What a stop by Pinaranda. It's still alive and off the post and out by Lebovitz. Northern Colorado in possession. Mentioned before, they don't really have a lot of flexibility to make substitutions. So the same 11 still out there in the 60th minute. Cross from Prentice, a good header, and what a finish! Irvin Para at the back post conjures a road goal for Northern Colorado, and they lead 1 0 with 30 to play. He got sort of turned around, never even made a play on the ball, really. He's never going to beat Para that one, and the firm header. Has two Greenville players on the line. Dom for Deju who comes for it. Dom making a run. Hasn't done a whole lot of that in this match. Deju invited to shoot and what a finish! Absolutely brilliant from Jerry Deju. He had the space, he took the space and the Hailstorm are marching on to victory at the home of the league leaders. He scored the first goal in club history in the U.S. Open Cup, but this could be the most important goal he'll score all year. A two-goal cushion, a sensational strike. It's Pearson, it's Pearson. And Alanius will take this one. Does have a bar of short. He won't use him. Well, he tried to go short, and he does just about get it through to Fenton. Here's a bar, a left-footed shot, and Penuranda comes up with the save. He runs into the advertising board, and that is that. A massive result for Northern Colorado. They go on the road to the league leaders, and they take them down emphatically 2-0 two -nil winners. 2-0 two -nil win at a plus 254. Northern Colorado gets the Duke over Greenville Triumph. Big win that they need, that uh, Coach Eamon Zayed and the Hailstorm need no question. Also on the board, Charlotte and Chattanooga. Four-goal draw there, 2-2 two -two each at a plus 234. And then Tormenta FC, South Georgia Tormenta, works their way all the way out to Fresno, California, and they get a 2-0 win over Central Valley Fuego. Some transactions happening for South Georgia Tormenta also to shore up their uh, offense to, to get them ready for the stretch run. We'll get into that and in coming up with the news around the league. So what that does is it gives you the standings, and Richmond and Greenville are tied. 23 matches in. 11, 5, and 7. Everybody across the board, even Steven, and it is down to goal difference. Richmond right now at a plus 15. Greenville at a plus 2. So the kickers 
having won uh, three of their last five, unbeaten in four of their last five, where Greenville only won two of their last five. Everything is even after 23 matches except for goal difference. Union Omaha, four points back, had their four-match unbeaten string snap. They're at 34 points in third. Chattanooga, unbeaten in their last five, 33 points at 9, 6, and 8, but they have played 23 matches, and Union Omaha still is fighting back from U.S. Open Cup play. So they are uh, still with matches in hand, and they can make some uh, make some uh, work uh, easy for them at the top of the table if they can take care of business in those two matches in hand. Fifth place right now, forward Madison. They're unbeaten in their last three, unbeaten in four of five. They're at 31 points. Charlotte at 30 points right now. They are above the playoff. Uh, they are the sixth team in the playoff on goals scored. We've had to go to that group of the tiebreaker. Charlotte, Tormenta, each with 22 matches played, each at 8-6-8, eight, and eight, each at minus three in goal difference. But Charlotte has five more goals. So Charlotte right now is your sixth team in the playoffs. Tormenta is right now outside looking in. They've got to work on the number of goals that they put in the back of the net. Northern Colorado snapped their three-game winless streak by getting the win last time out in the match of the week. So 24 matches played, the most of anybody here in USL League 1 so far. They're at 29 points. Central Valley Fuegos lost three of five. They've only won once in their last five, but they've played 22. They're at 27 points. So right now you're looking at seven points separating three from nine. Three, six. Uh, you got three, six. Uh, where's the math? Seven teams separated by seven points right now and only three points away from four squads as they chase that last playoff spot. North Carolina FC has drawn their last two. They're at 23 points. FC Tucson right now has lost three of their last five, and they are at 17 points. So that gets us into the schedule for the upcoming week, the last week of the month of August and the early part of the month of October, and there is midweek action. 7 o'clock at American Legion, Charlotte Independence hosting South Georgia Tormenta, Warner Park, Papian, Nebraska at 8 o'clock, Union Omaha hosting Ford Madison, 10.30 at Fresno State, Central Valley Fuego hosting FC Tucson. So that gets us into the month of September. Hard to think, but we've got matchups on Saturday. Legacy early at 7 o'clock, Triumph and Forward Madison, 8 o'clock, Papian, Nebraska, Union Omaha and Red Wolves, 9 o'clock, Severance High School, 9 o'clock Eastern Time, Hailstorm in North Carolina FC, 10 o'clock at Keno North, it is FC Tucson and Charlotte Independent. So let's take you around all of the news that has happened in a USL League 1 to date. Team of the Week for Week 22 is out. Jonathan Bolaños is second player of the week nod for the year, and Bolaños had a goal and two assists in the Richmond victory over Omaha. So that gives him Player of the Week honors. Will Polisic in net for North Carolina FC to finish up the Team of the Week. Backline of four, Jalen Chrysler from Richmond, Owen Dom from Hailstorm, Jake Dengler from Tormenta, Arthur Rogers from Hailstorm. Midfield four, Bolaños, Mo Espinosa from Chattanooga, Miguel Ibarra from Charlotte, Luis Perez from FC Tucson, Keziah Sterling and Emiliano Terzaghi up top with your forwards of two. So that is how things lay out when it comes to Team of the Week in USL Championship. Other news that is going on currently. Uh, former U.S. Uh, youth national midfielder McQuellia Kale signs with a South Georgia Tormenta after six years within the Villarreal CF Youth and Reserve System. The native of Minneapolis, Minnesota, return, pen, uh, returns pending league and federation approval. He'll be playing professionally for the first time in the United States after seven years in Spain and Cyprus, playing with U19C and B teams of Villarreal before spending a season with Paphos of the Cypriot First Division. Uh, Kale's uh, featured for US, uh, U17, U18, to U20. 25-year-old has made 28 combined youth national team appearances and scored Seven goals. Also on the board, Tormenta signs uh, League Two standout Mutaya Mwape also for the remainder of the year. And he will join pending league and federation approval. Joins the first team after spending the summer with Tormenta FC2 in League Two. Professional experience with him to Tormenta. Played with Charlotte Independence in the championship. The kickers in League One. Four goals, eight assists, and 53 appearances from 2018 to 2020 in League Two with T2. 
Mwapwe started 11 matches, 616 minutes, one assist, or sorry, one goal, three assists, professional debut in Charlotte. He also played for League Two's Ocean City Nor'easters and the Charlotte Eagles, with which he won the Eastern Conference Championship and the Eastern Conference title, respectively. So, very, very busy work being done by the front office of South Georgia Tormenta for the stretch run. And a reminder that Omaha signed former youth national team defender Shaft Brewer as well. So, a lot of action going on for the teams that are trying to make their pushes in USL League One. So that will get you ready for all the news and everything. And remember, you can go to uslleagueone.com to stay up to date with the newsletter. You can sign up and get all the information as it comes across on a daily basis. And for USL League One, don't forget to be a part of their social media experience on Twitter, on Facebook, and on Instagram. So that's another full week of everything going on in USL League One. If you are in market and can attend a match, attend a match. We already told you just how tough it is in the standings right now. That will continue for the remainder of the year. If you're in market and can't hang out, then what you can do is uh, follow along in your local provider. And if you're out of market and still want to follow along, go to ESPN Plus because ESPN Plus has all the matches for USL League One that uh, are on the board. You go to ESPN Plus and follow along all season long. So for everybody here at SDH, that's your tour of USL League One. Play it safe, everybody. Enjoy the games. 